So you've been taught in the past how to categorize a bond as like a single bond, double bond, or triple bond. But there is actually another way to categorize bonds, and that's as sigma or pi bonds. So a sigma bond, which is given by this Greek symbol, which you can feel free to use as shorthand, um, a sigma bond is when the electrons in the bond lie directly between the two nuclei. And that's essentially what you're usually thinking of when a bond happens. So if we're thinking of something like two H's bonding together, we have these two atoms, they each have an unpaired electron, and they kind of pull those two electrons in the middle to share them as a bond. And those electrons, that shared pair, is directly between the two nuclei. Um, which kind of makes sense. It helps shield the two nuclei from each other, allows those atoms to get a little closer together, and then there's this attraction between the electrons and the nuclei. Um, this is a sigma bond. So it's when your orbitals that are containing the electrons, bonding electrons, lie directly between the two nuclei. This always happens in a single bond. So a single bond is always a sigma bond. The electrons lie directly between the two nuclei. Um, and that makes sense. Single sigma. S super easy. So if H is with H and that forms a single bond, sigma bond. It could be two CLs bonding together. Single bond, it's a sigma bond. Now what happens if I try to fit extra bonds like a double bond or a triple bond in that same location? So if I do that, I'm going to create what's called a pi bond. And if you think about this, so let's look at an example. Let's look at C2H2, which has this Lewis structure. Notice there is a triple bond between the two Cs. So what happens first is I first form a sigma bond between the two Cs, where I put the electron pair directly between the two carbons. That is a sigma, sigma bond, when the electrons are directly between them. But now by doing that, I put these negative electrons there. And if I'm trying to fit more electrons, it would make sense that they would repel a little. So I can't put any more directly between them. I'm going to have to put any more in that bond above and below. And that is what my pi bond is. My pi bond is when the orbitals containing these bonding electrons they fall above and below the two nuclei. And what allows this to happen is actually the p orbitals. If you remember the, p, the shape of the p orbitals when we did this, they were these kind of um, figure eight patterns. And what happens if I have two atoms, two you know atoms that are gonna bond and they have parallel p orbitals, what can happen is the electrons in those orbitals, when the bond, the bond can form, the pi bond can form from these p orbitals, and now the electrons can hover up, you know, above and below rather than directly between. So that's what a pi bond is. Sigma is when the electrons are directly between. Pi is when the electrons are above and below. And this is kind of um, going in depth into, you know, how this happens. But usually what the AP does is they just want to know, um, you know, is it a sigma or a pi bond in a structure? Um, so whenever you have a multiple bond, multiple bond is double or triple, um, you're going to start having pi bonds. We said sigma, single is always sigma. Pi bonds will start to happen in multiple bonding. But in multiple bonding, one of the bonds is always a sigma. You put it directly between the atoms first, and then the extra ones in that place will be pi bonds. So in a multiple bond, one of the bonds is always a sigma, and the rest are pi. So if I look at this drawing here, C2H4, okay, um, if I'm looking at this double bond, one of the bonds would be a sigma and one would be pi. So this would have one sigma, one pi. If I'm looking at the total structure, it would have one, two, three, four, five sigma and one pi. Because remember, single bonds are also sigma bonds. This has a triple bond. So one would be a sigma and two would be pi. So notice in a multiple bond, one is always sigma and the rest are pi. Super easy. Here is the same information organized in a chart. A single bond, which we say has a bond order of one, is just a sigma bond. Single is sigma, SS. A double bond, which we say has a bond order of two, is a sigma bond and one pi bond. So one sigma, one pi, one plus one adds up to a bond order of two. And a triple bond, which we say has a bond order of three, has one sigma and two pi. Two plus one is three. Okay, take a moment, try this example, then pause the video and check your work. 
Okay, we're going over this. It would be helpful to either visualize these structures or draw them. I will draw them out for you. So PCL3, here we go. It looks like this. It has one, two, three single bonds. So it has three sigma. It has no pi bonds whatsoever. So this is not my answer. Here's B drawn out, OF2. Also only has single bonds, so it would only have sigma bonds. This has two sigma bonds, not two pi. If I look at HCN, here it is. And if you're having trouble with drawing, make sure you go back to my drawing video. Um, but here this has, um, in the triple bond, there's one sigma and two pi. So this does have two pi. Overall, it has one, two sigma and two pi. And just for our, so this answer is C, but just to see out the rest, NO3 minus actually has resonance. Uh, one structure cannot accurately depict it, so we'd have to draw all three. Um, and in actuality, these bonds are not actually a double and two single. They are three bonds of the same length that are a hybrid between a double and a single bond. Um, but if we're trying to figure out how many pi and sigma it would, and something has resonance, it would be helpful to look at just one resonance structure. So this has one, two, three sigma, and one pi. So not this one. And same with O3 with having resonance. So if you're trying to figure out sigma and single for something with resonance, look at just one resonance structure, one, two sigma, and one pi. So that would not be the answer either. While we're talking about resonance, notice that we said something has resonance when you have this multiple bond, this double or triple bond that you could have actually rotated around to any of the atoms. So in actuality, um, the electrons are delocalized and you know shared throughout that structure. What kind of bonding do you need in order to have resonance? You need pi bonding. So to have resonance, you need pi bonding. And the pi bond is what actually allows your electrons to become delocalized. So if I look at this benzene structure, C6H6, um, this has resonance because rather than the double bonds being here, 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 I could have drawn a structure with the double bonds being here, here, here. And in actuality, the electrons are not, you know, in a fixed place. They are resonating amongst all these carbons and thus, you know, kind of showing that in a structure would look something like this. It's the pi bonds that allow that to happen. They can hover above the carbons and below the, carbon, uh, the carbons. That is what pi bonding is. We had said that it allows place for the electrons above and below. And so in resonance, this pi bonding can allow that to happen. Um, by the way, sigma bonds are never delocalized. And this is what allows in something like NO3 before I had showed you here, it's three resonance structures. That is what actually allows these bonds to be the same length. Because if I'm thinking of this is not actually a double and two single. This is actually three bonds of the same length where these pi orbitals, um, this pi bonding is allowing the electrons to become delocalized and resonate between all of these oxygens. So they're really like a bond and a third, each of these. Okay, um, so delocalized pi bonding resonance also allows electrons to um, perhaps give conductivity. Um, this you'll notice for something like graphite ends up having a lot of resonance. If you have a lot of resonance, it can also lead something to conduct electricity that you might not normally think would conduct electricity. Um, and now just getting into bond length and strength. Bond length is the distance between the two nuclei in the bond. Um, do you think a longer bond would be stronger or weaker? So if I'm looking at a bond, a bond is a force of attraction between the positive nuclei and the electrons. So think Coulombic force of attraction. How does distance affect it? Wait a minute. If you increase the distance, okay, you're going to have less force of attraction. So that would be a weaker bond. A larger distance between nuclei and electrons would lead to a weaker force of attraction, and therefore it would require less energy to break it because we said, hey, breaking bonds takes energy. So we're going to notice this correlation. Anything that makes a bond longer is going to make it weaker. Anything that makes a bond shorter is going to make it stronger. Um, so let's talk about factors that are going to affect the length. There's two of them, and you've got to know both. In order of importance, the most important thing is atomic radius. 
okay? So the larger the atoms, okay? So look at here, Cn, Co, Cf. N is larger, O is a little smaller, F is a little smaller. We know that radius decreases across the period due to increasing effect of nuclear charge. Um, so which of these would have the longest radius or the longest bond length would be the things that has the biggest atoms. So the larger the atoms, the longer the bond. That just makes sense. If, the, if your atom's bigger, the distance between the two nuclei would be longer. So that would also be a weaker bond then. Smaller atoms allows the atoms to get closer together. Makes sense that you have a shorter bond and that bond would then be stronger. Because remember, distance and Coulombic force of attraction, the smaller the distance, the stronger the force of attraction. So that's when we're considering different types of elements. Now, if you're down between the same elements, um, the type of bond will start to matter. Single versus double versus triple. Which do you think is going to be the strongest and the shortest? Okay, so single bonds, which we said are always sigma, they are the longest and the weakest. Triple bonds, one sigma and two pi, are the shortest and the strongest. So if I look at a carbon single bond, the bond length is about 147 picometers compared to a carbon-carbon double bond, which the bond length is going down, notice, and the energy needed to break it is much higher um, because we have a much stronger force of attraction, it seems. And a triple bond is the shortest and the strongest. So single is the longest and weakest, triple is the you know, shortest and strongest, and anything in between would be in between that. Okay. Um, why does this happen? If you think about it, multiple bonds, like a triple bond, increases the electron density between the two nuclei. So in the bond, right, I have two nuclei, two atoms on either side, and I have my shared electrons. And the more negative electrons I fit in the space, and I'll have some in between and some above and below in the pi bond, sigma bond, pi. Um, but they're going to kind of cushion those two positive charges from each other, those two positive nuclei, and they're going to be able to get even closer together. So having these more electrons is going to decrease the repulsions between the two nuclei and it's also going to enhance the attraction between the negative electrons and the positive nuclei so as a result the nucleus can the nuclei can remove move closer together and um two atoms will have a closer stronger shorter bond um stronger force of attraction if you have a triple versus a double versus a single Okay, note about resonance. In a bond, in a resonance structure, remember that the bond resonates between all the possible positions, making the bond length and strength equal in a value somewhere between that of a pure single or double bond. So remember, one resonance structure is not enough to depict it. We need to, it's really a blend of two or more resonance structures depending on it. Okay, so if I'm looking at like NO2 minus, okay, um, the bond order would actually be 1.5. It's a single and a double in one resonance structure, but it's not really a single and a double in the entire structure. If I'm trying to do bond order, you count the number of electron pairs, one, two, three, divided by the number of bonds or locations you're putting them, one, two, three divided by two is 1.5. And remember, to have resonance, you need a pi bond. That is what allows the electrons to become delocalized and able to resonate between the multiple positions. So I hope you learned a little bit about sigma versus pi bonds and also how to be able to tell if a bond is stronger or weaker. Remember, first go by atomic radius. Bigger the radius, the longer the bond length, and therefore the weaker the bond. And if you're between single, double, triple, triple bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds. The AP loves, loves, loves to ask questions about this, and we will continue to practice this in class.